Hello, math magicians. Today, we're going to be talking about what can happen when solving equations. Please write that title on the top of the page where you'll be taking your notes. So basically, there are three different things that could happen when you're solving an equation. The first thing is something that we've been experiencing already. You could get exactly one solution. When we get all of our variables on one side of the equal sign and all of the constants on the other and then isolate that variable, we get exactly one answer. And that's what it means when we say you could get exactly one solution. All right, the second thing that could happen is that we could get no solution. This is when all the variables cancel each other out and what is, whatever is left over is not equal to each other. So basically, we get a statement that is false. When this happens, all the variables cancel out, and then you, um, you get a false statement. It means there is no solution for that particular equation. Nothing we substitute in for the variable will ever make the statement true and equal to each other. The third thing that could happen is that we could get infinitely many solutions. That means that basically any value that we substitute into the equation will work. Many, many, many. We could go on and on and on to eternity, and all the solutions that we try would work in the equation. So this happens when all of the variables cancel each other out, and what is left over is equal to each other. This is a true equality statement and means that the equation has countless solutions. Now let's take a look at some examples of how this works when you're solving equations. Please write down example one in your notes. Okay, now the first thing that we're going to need to do on the left side of our equal sign is to combine like terms. So I see 6x minus 2x. When I combine those, 6x minus 2x will give me 4x. I still have plus 5. On the right side of the equal sign, I will have to do the distributive property before I can combine anything that are like terms. So when I multiply that 4 through my parentheses, I get 4 plus 4x plus 1. Now, on this side, I have two constants. So those are like terms, and I'm going to combine them. I'm going to get 5 plus 4x. And on the left, I still have 4x plus 5. Okay, now I want to get all of my variables on one side of the equal sign and all of my constants on the other. So if I decide that I want to remove these positive 4x's, my inverse operation will be to subtract 4x. I'll do the same thing on the other side. And on the left, these inverse operations cancel each other out. However, on the left side, these will also cancel each other out. They are also inverse. So what I have left is 5 is equal to 5. Okay, my variables canceled out, and what is left over is a true equality statement. This means that I have infinitely many solutions. Okay, and remember that what that means is no matter what value I take and substitute back into my original equation, no matter what variable or value of x that I choose, it will always turn out to be an equality statement, which means we have many, 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 many solutions that would work. All right, please write down example two into your notes. This time looks like we're going to have to do the distributive property on both sides. So on the left, when I multiply that 7 through my parentheses, I'm going to get 35n minus 14. On the right, when I distribute, I'm going to get 36n minus 6. Okay, um, I'm going to move all of my variables to the right. I always tend to look for 
the larger of the two numbers that have my variable attached, and then I keep my variables on that side. So I'm going to get rid of 35n. That's a positive 35n. So in order for me to eliminate it, I will have to subtract it. That means I have to subtract 35n on the other side as well. These guys are inverse and cancel each other out. Now notice this minus 14, that minus belongs to the 14. So he kind of changes his jobs. Instead of being a minus 14, that minus is now attached to the 14 as a negative sign. So negative 14 on the left, 36n minus 35n is 1n. I can write the 1 in front, but I like to just write that 1n as n minus 6. Okay, I need to get rid of that minus 6 so I can isolate my n. The inverse operation of subtract 6 is add 6, which I will do on both sides of my equation. These guys are my inverse that cancel out. On the right hand side, n is now isolated. And on the left, negative 14 plus 6 gives me negative 8. Okay, in this situation, we got exactly one solution. My variables did not completely cancel each other out. I have 1n on the right equals negative 8. That means for this equation, there is exactly one solution, and that solution is negative 8. All right, let's try one more example together. And if we can handle this one, we can handle anything. All right, again, I do see that I have the distributive property on both sides. So I'm going to distribute the 2 through the parentheses on the left-hand side of my equation. That's going to give me 6d plus 8. On the right-hand side, 4d is not in the parentheses, so I'm just going to rewrite that. And I will distribute the 2 through this parentheses, giving me 2d plus 2. Now, on the right side of this equation, I have two variable terms, so I'm going to combine those, and that's going to give me 6d plus 2, which is my constant. On the left, I still have 6d plus 8. All right, I'm going to get all my d's to the left, so I'm going to subtract these 6d's that are on the right-hand side. On the other side, I do the exact same thing. These guys are inverse and cancel out, but on the left-hand side, 6d minus 6d is 0. They are also inverse and cancel out. What I am left with is 8 is equal to 2. Well, we know that 8 is not equal to 2, so this is our um, false statement. 8 is not equal to 2. When, you, when your variables cancel each other out on both sides and what's left over is not equal to each other, this is no solution. There are no values of d that I could substitute into my original equation and they would turn out to be equal to one another. No solution. All right, you guys, good luck.